Hey everyone, this will be another video focusing on some lesser known separatist movements. Like last time, I'm starting off with two movements in the Nordics. The first being the Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands are an autonomous territory within the Kingdom of Denmark. The Faroe Islands technically came under Danish influence during the Kalmar Union, where they were a part of Norway, a member of this union. Later, Sweden would leave the Union, and the Faroe Islands would remain a part of the Norwegian portion of Denmark-Norway, until 1814, where Norway became independent for a short time before coming under the Swedish crown. Here, the various territories to the west, including the Faroe Islands, would stay under the Danish crown, rather than the newly independent Norway. Today, the Faroe Islands are a region with a distinct culture and language, which is more related to Old Norse and Icelandic than it is to Danish. This has, of course, led to there being an independence movement there. In 1948, a referendum was held, and it was an extremely close election, where a very slight majority voted for independence. But since the election was so close, it sparked some controversy. The main reason for this being that the only options were full independence or remaining Danish, and a lot of people didn't vote for either because they simply wanted some autonomy. This led to the move towards independence being scrapped and instead being decided by a local election where various parties supported either autonomy, full Danish sovereignty, or independence. And this led to the current situation on the Faroe Islands, with them being an autonomous territory with a lot of self-rule. Another major reason why the Faroe Islands have not yet moved towards full independence is how reliant they are on Denmark, as between 10 and 12% of their public budget consists solely of financial support from Denmark. Now let's move on to another Nordic region, Jemtland. Jemtland is a region in modern Sweden, which used to be a part of Norway. It was lost by Denmark-Norway in their wars against Sweden, where Denmark also lost quite a bit of territory. This is of course what has led to the region having a distinct culture and a dialect which is considered its own language by some locals. The Jemtland dialect was still considered a Norwegian dialect as late as 1905 when Norway finally gained its independence from Sweden, but the region still remained Swedish. Today, the Jemtland dialect has gone through another century of Swedish influence that has led to how it is today, which I would consider somewhere in between Swedish and Norwegian. The northern and western dialects are arguably more similar to the Norwegian dialects across the border, while the eastern dialects are more similar to the Swedish dialects right outside Jemtland. The separatist movement in Jemtland today is a bit of a humorous but also somewhat serious culture and marketing project which wishes to keep the local identity alive. The founder of the movement even proclaimed the United Republics of Jemtland, which supposedly would be a republic within the Kingdom of Sweden. The second president of this republic, a comedian, was quoted saying the liberation movement was 51% a joke and 49% serious, which I think sums it up nicely. It's not so much about the region actually becoming a country, but more about keeping the local Jemtland culture alive. The main reason for this of course being that in all likelihood not very many genuinely support independence for the region. Although, due to the lack of actual polls on the matter, we can't say for certain how many would actually support independence. To the south in Germany is in Southern Schleswig. It was more of an active movement in the past, especially when Northern Schleswig was still German. And today, it doesn't really push for full separatism, but instead it simply promotes the interests of the minority groups there. The movement has its roots in back when Prussia took Schleswig from Denmark, as Denmark attempted to integrate Schleswig into the rest of the country, giving the Prussians a casus belli against Denmark. Historically, most of Schleswig was Danish-speaking, as can be seen on this map here, but throughout the Middle Ages, many German merchants had been moving to the region, making it increasingly German. This led to the region having a significant German minority by the time of the war in the 1800s, although it remained majority Danish till after the Prussian conquest. This can be seen more clearly here on this map, which shows the linguistic makeup a bit before the Prussians conquered Schleswig. Later, after the end of World War I, even more Germans had been moving to the region, and a referendum was held. Here, the northern half reunited with Denmark, and a significant Danish minority remained in the south. This minority is made up of around 50,000 people today, and they do make up a significant percentage in some of the countryside and in towns such as Flensburg. Today, the South Schleswig Voters Association represents the Danish and Frisian minorities in Schleswig and generally just pushes for their political interests and not for full separatism, as the majority of people there are Germans today. 
Another local autonomy slash separatist movement, which isn't very well known, is the devolution to the north of England. It's a broad term which describes the wish for devolved governmental powers that would give more autonomy to the northern parts of England. The movement has its roots in the north of England having been a part of the Kingdom of Northumbria before the unification of England, giving it a culture more distinct from the south. In terms of more recent events involving more devolved powers in the north, there was the Northeast England Devolution Referendum in 2004. This was a referendum on whether or not Northeast England should establish an elected assembly for the region, giving a similar level of local rule to Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Although the referendum was not passed, and roughly 78% voted no. In general, the movement is about the north of England being very far removed from London, and to some locals, the differences between the north and London are even similar to the differences between Scotland and London. A more recent survey by the BBC in 2014 suggested that around 85% of people in the north wished for devolution of some powers, as they supported local control over policing, taxation, and education. So again, this is a movement more so for regionalism and autonomy than it is one for full separatism. Although if a second referendum on Scottish independence were to take place and succeed, this could perhaps change the mindset of those in Northern England. But that's all for now. Consider becoming a member if you want to support the channel, and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Also remember to subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to see more content like this in the future. See you in my next video.